it seems like nothing more than layers of wood, yet within its structure lies a secret to immense strength and efficiency. This material is a testament to ingenious engineering, a product where resourcefulness and resilience are fused into one. The entire journey begins with raw, rounded logs, which are carefully spun and peeled into long, continuous sheets of thin veneer. Once dried, each delicate sheet is coated in a powerful adhesive. They are then meticulously stacked, with the grain of each layer oriented perpendicular to the one below it. This cross-grained assembly is then subjected to intense heat and pressure, bonding the layers into a single, unified, multi-layered board. This unique structure grants the finished panel its signature properties, dimensional stability, and strength in all directions. It is this engineered advantage that has made plywood a cornerstone of global construction and furniture design, shaping the very look of modern architecture and interior spaces. It looks like a forest, but it operates like a factory, a vast living machine engineered for a single purpose. This is the often unseen foundation of the engineered wood industry. These are planted forests, managed with the precision of a vast green machine. Where natural woodlands might take centuries to mature, species like acacia, eucalyptus, and pine are ready for harvest in a mere 7 to 20 years. Every hectare is densely packed with 2,000 to 3,000 trees, their planting staggered by age to guarantee a constant, unbroken flow of raw material. This is a model designed to break the industry's dependence on the slow and destructive logging of ancient forests. Spanning more than 290 million hectares across the globe, these industrial plantations now supply over half of all the raw material destined for plywood production. The entire life cycle is meticulously controlled, beginning with seeds specifically bred to yield straight, uniform trunks. From the protected environment of the nursery, the saplings are moved to the plantation to begin their accelerated journey to maturity. Here, they are set in precisely calculated plots, ensuring each tree receives the ideal amount of light and nutrients. Throughout their growth, they are carefully pruned, fertilized, and shielded from pests, all to optimize every cubic meter of wood. When the time comes, the harvest is a swift, mechanized operation. Trees are felled, stripped of their branches, and sectioned into logs with industrial efficiency. The straightest, most perfect trunks are sent to become veneer, while the remaining tops and branches are converted into biomass fuel, powering the very mills that will process the wood. The ecological significance of this system is profound. Without these managed forests, the global appetite for plywood alone would exert devastating pressure on millions of hectares of natural ecosystems. Instead, this closed-loop approach promotes rapid renewal and serves as a buffer, safeguarding precious wildlife habitats from encroachment. It is why every finished sheet represents a philosophy of equilibrium, where planting and harvesting become a single, sustainable rhythm a cycle where the demands of industry and the needs of the environment can coexist. It arrives from the forest still breathing with moisture. But left to the elements, this raw lifeblood would soon vanish, leaving the timber cracked and brittle. After leaving the plantation, logs still hold natural moisture deep within their fibers. Once stacked at the mill, however, they are exposed. Without careful management, they would quickly dry out crack, and lose their innate resilience. This is why the log yard serves not simply as storage, but as a kind of resting place for the raw timber. Here, a fine mist regularly showers the wood, maintaining a stable humidity that prevents any deformation. These artificial sprays penetrate beyond the surface, creating a crucial moisture balance between the core and the bark. This equilibrium minimizes splitting and helps to curb the spread of both insects and fungi. From a distance, the log yard resembles a vast, quiet reserve, where thousands of trunks lie in neat layers under meticulous watch. 
this process of preservation ensures each log retains its original quality, safeguarding the stability and strength required to advance into the industrial cycle. As the next stage begins, the logs are immersed in enormous hot water basins or placed inside steam chambers. They are subjected to temperatures ranging from 80 to 100 degrees Celsius. The pervasive heat softens the wood's entire structure, allowing the cellulose fibers to expand while relieving internal stresses, a critical step that prevents the logs from cracking. Depending on the species and diameter of the timber, this soaking can last anywhere from several hours to an entire day. During this period, heat and steam penetrate all the way to the core, creating a uniform consistency from the outside in. Once removed from the basin, the logs have reached an ideal state of flexibility and stability, now ready for what comes next. It spins like a colossal spindle, yet what emerges is as thin as paper. Once softened by heat, the trunks are cut into sections from 1 to 2.6 meters long, sized for the panels they will become. A laser or mechanical gauge first aligns each log, mapping the optimal length to maximize volume and remove defects. The ends are then cut perfectly flat and square, creating a secure mount for the peeling lathe spindle. The entire log now begins to rotate, accelerating to hundreds of revolutions per minute. A steel knife over 3 meters long, honed to an angle between 20 and 23 degrees, presses firmly against the spinning wood. Opposite this blade, a nose bar applies constant pressure, compressing the fibers to prevent the veneer from cracking as it peels. With every turn, a thin veneer, only 1 to 3 millimeters thick, unrolls in a continuous ribbon. This thickness is dictated by the micro-adjusted gap between knife and spindle, where a deviation of just 0.1 millimeters can ruin a sheet. Modern systems use real-time sensors to constantly fine-tune the blade, ensuring the veneer is never too thin to tear or too thick to press. When the log is reduced to a small, unpeelable core, the long veneer is cut crosswise into standard panels and neatly stacked. From a single solid trunk, these flat, uniform sheets emerge, the technical foundation that gives plywood its extraordinary strength. It begins as a fragile, waterlogged ribbon of wood. To become a material of immense strength, it must first pass through an ordeal of fire and air. The freshly peeled veneer, saturated with moisture often exceeding 30%, is soft and easily misshapen. To forge it into something stable, it enters a specialized drying system, journeying through long chambers that stretch for tens of meters, enveloped in air heated from 150 to 180 degrees Celsius. Carried along by conveyors, the thin veneers glide through a series of heating zones as powerful fans circulate the intense heat, ensuring it penetrates evenly from above and below. In a matter of just five to seven minutes, the moisture content plummets to a precise six to eight percent. This is the perfect equilibrium, preserving the wood's natural flexibility while maximizing its mechanical strength. Achieving this state is a delicate balancing act. Too much heat will warp or crack the veneer, while too little leaves it damp and unstable. To maintain this balance, sensors constantly track temperature and humidity, feeding data to a control room for immediate adjustments. Emerging from the heat, the veneers are then cooled naturally inside an enclosed space, a gentle transition that prevents the shock of a sudden temperature drop. The outcome is a stack of perfectly flat and stable sheets, now conditioned and ready for the next phase of their transformation. With its moisture content stabilized, the veneer advances to the gluing stage, a critical process that will fuse individual layers into a single, unified whole. The choice of adhesive is crucial, with ureaformaldehyde typically used for indoor furniture and phenolformaldehyde selected for its superior resistance to moisture and weather in outdoor applications. Along the production line, each sheet glides through a rolling or spraying system, an impossibly thin coat of resin 
just a few dozen microns thick, is applied with precision, enough to saturate the wood fibers, but not so much as to leave any excess. Every variable, from the resin's viscosity and temperature to the application volume, is meticulously controlled, as the slightest deviation could compromise the strength of the final bond. Optical sensors scan the surface, monitoring coverage and triggering instant corrections to ensure perfect uniformity. Each sheet emerges with a flawless coating, prepared to be layered into the strong multiply structure that gives plywood its engineered power. Here, immense force is applied not to destroy, but to create. With their grain set at right angles and coated in adhesive, the stacked veneers slide into the jaws of a cold press. A powerful hydraulic system exerts a steady, uniform force over the panel's entire surface, reaching pressures between 0.8 and 1.2 megapascals. For 15 to 30 minutes, this pressure holds firm, allowing the adhesive to distribute evenly and tack the veneers together, though the final chemical bond has not yet formed. This initial compression is crucial for stabilizing the panel's shape, squeezing out trapped air and ensuring intimate contact between each layer. Without this step, the glue could pool unevenly, creating weak points that might later lead to delamination or the entire board warping. When the cycle concludes, the panel emerges in a preliminary state, a unified but not yet permanent form now stable enough for the heat that will complete its transformation. From the cold press, the assembled veneers travel to the next critical phase, the hot press, a stage that will ultimately determine the plywood's final quality. Here, massive steel plates heat the board surface with absolute uniformity, climbing to temperatures between 120 and 150 degrees Celsius. At the same time, hydraulic pressure intensifies to between 1.0 and 1.5 megapascals. This combination of intense heat and immense pressure sparks a chemical reaction within the resin. The adhesive liquefies, seeping deep into the wood fibers before hardening, locking the veneers into one solid monolithic block. The duration of this fiery ordeal depends on the panel's thickness, with each cycle typically lasting from four to seven minutes. All the while, a network of sensors carefully monitors both temperature and pressure, making constant micro-adjustments to prevent overpressing, which could fracture the wood, or underpressing, which would result in a weak bond. Finally, the press opens to reveal a perfectly flat and smooth sheet, possessing a uniform thickness and remarkable strength. It is in this moment that the material is truly born, no longer just layers of wood, but a single engineered whole, performing with the strength of many. The transformation is nearly complete, but perfection lies in the details. A raw, solid panel now awaits its final form. After leaving the intense heat of the press, the plywood sheets journey to the cutting area, where they are trimmed to precise standard dimensions. Blades of high-speed alloy steel spin into action, making clean cuts while shearing away any excess margins or defects formed during pressing. Each panel is carefully aligned, guaranteeing perfect squareness and uniformity across all sides. From there, the surfaces are treated by a multi-roll sanding system. Drums coated with fine abrasives work in a continuous rhythm, gradually removing rough spots to produce a smooth, bright finish. Throughout this process, an integrated dust extraction system captures wood particles, ensuring the surface remains clean at every stage and giving each sheet its high geometric accuracy. Before leaving the line, every panel undergoes a swift inspection for thickness, flatness, and layer adhesion. Basic tests, such as checks for bending or bond strength, confirm that no sheet contains technical flaws and that each one meets the required standards for use. Right after testing, the panels move to the packaging area. They are neatly stacked into bundles, ranging from several dozen to as many as 100 sheets and secured with steel straps or heavy-duty plastic bands. 
Each bundle is then wrapped with a protective layer of polyethylene film or craft paper to guard against moisture during transport. Labels are attached, specifying dimensions, the production batch, and quality certification. Finally, forklifts lift the completed bundles and transfer them to a dry, well-ventilated storage area with a stable temperature. Here they are arranged in orderly rows, ready for dispatch and distribution to the market. What seems like waste is merely raw material in disguise. In this production line, nothing is discarded. The remaining log cores, edge trimmings, and defective veneers are all collected, destined to begin an entirely new industrial journey. These wood residues are first pulverized, shattered into particles of different sizes. The larger chips are set aside for the core layers of the new boards, while the finer material is reserved for the smooth outer surfaces. This particle mass then tumbles across vibrating screens, a mechanical sieve that filters out impurities, stray metals, or any oversized fragments. Next, the particles enter a drying chamber, a continuous blast of hot air heated to between 150 and 180 degrees Celsius, drives their moisture content down to a mere 2 to 3%, the perfect state for bonding. The dry particles are then coated in an industrial resin, most commonly urea formaldehyde, along with a small amount of paraffin or other moisture-resistant additives. This adhesive mixture is carefully spread in multiple layers onto a conveyor, with fine particles on the outside and coarser ones in the middle, forming the familiar three-layer structure. The entire mat is then loaded into a hot press, where it endures temperatures of around 180 to 200 degrees Celsius and pressures of several megapascals. Under this intense force, the resin melts and penetrates deep, locking each chip into a single solid board. Emerging from the press, the panel is cooled, trimmed to standard dimensions, and sanded to a perfectly smooth finish. The result is a flat, stable engineered material, a cost-effective alternative to plywood for countless applications in furniture and construction. In this way, the factory operates as a cycle. High-quality log sections become plywood, while every residue is reborn as particle board, extracting maximum value from every tree. From a single seed, a complex legacy is built. This is a story of transformation, where nothing is wasted and maximum value is extracted from every tree. The journey begins in the nursery, extends to vast plantation forests, and continues through an orchestrated sequence of production. From harvesting and log cutting to the delicate peeling of veneers, each step flows into the next. The process carries on through drying, gluing, and the immense pressure that binds each layer into a complete sheet of plywood. Every thin veneer is laid with intent, and each technical detail is meticulously controlled. This precision forges an engineered material defined by its exceptional strength and stability, making it suitable for everything from household furniture to the frameworks of industrial-scale architecture. Even wood residues are not discarded, but are instead reborn as particle board, closing the life cycle of the tree within a sustainable production model. This journey reveals that plywood is far more than simple laminated wood. It stands as a symbol of technical ingenuity working in harmony with nature.